Good morning, everybody. Uh, tomorrow, we're going back. My husband and I are going back to visit my daughter to celebrate her one year being in remission from Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it's a very special day. And as I look back of this year, which was a very long journey, the one thing that really stuck in my mind and will ever stick in my mind is the subject of my daughter losing her hair. So today I'm not going to talk to you about her cancer because I knew that the modern medicine would cure her cancer. I just had faith in the doctors at Children's National and the chemotherapy and radiation. But today I want to talk to you about as a mom, as my daughter's caretaker, the journey that I saw and I felt as my daughter went through the stages of losing her hair. So <clears throat> when we all found out that she had cancer, the first thought that came to my daughter's mind was, am I going to lose my hair? And she went online and she did a lot of research and she found without found out that her treatment, AVBD, she would indeed lose her hair. And uh, she was pretty upset about that. I mean, who would not be? And I was too. Uh, Lena had always had beautiful long hair. When she was two, three years old, she had these banana curls. You know, when she was five and six, people would come over, Oh, your hair, your hair. And she would say, don't touch me, don't touch me. Her hair has always been her trademark. You know, she could just wash her hair, long hair, and, and leave for school, and it would look beautiful. She didn't have to spend a lot of time dealing with it with hair products, etc. So, as her caretaker, I was concerned about how this journey was going to be with her losing her hair. I was not concerned about her physically. I, I knew the cancer would cure, cure her, but I was concerned about her mental journey fighting cancer. So <clears throat> she decided, uh, doing her research, that she wanted to get her hair cut short because she was starting to see a little hair on her pillow and she didn't want to wake up seeing hair in her pillow or seeing hair in the shower. It was, going to, it was going to be depressing. And we made an appointment with our hairdresser, Michelle, who's been the only one that's ever cut her hair. And Michelle was very sweet. And um, she cut her hair short like mine and it looked really cute. Uh, it took a while to, to get adjusted to it. Um, and then we had to go into the hospital, uh, during our first cycle because she had some complications and her hair was just a mess because she was laying on it and the hair was falling out and she wanted to get her head shaved. I mean, she was adamant about that. She had me put a trash bag over the mirror in the bathroom and as her mom this really uh, broke my heart because not only did she not want the outside world seeing her, but she didn't want to see herself. So I was really concerned about her. How was she going to be strong to get through this? Well, I tried really hard <laughs> to get somebody in the hospital to shave her head, but I don't get it. This is an oncology floor, and they have nobody there to do that. I, to this day, I do not understand that, and they need to get a service for that. But I had um, my husband bring in my son's hair clippers, and I called our hair stylist, Michelle, and she told me, start with this clipper and go with this clipper. 
And um, we did it. We went in the bathroom and my husband held her hand and I turned on the buzzer. I could still hear that buzzer going on. And we slowly cut her hair and I saw the hair droppings on the floor. And when I was all finished, she touched her head and she said, I don't wanna see the hair on the floor. Get, get it out of here. So she didn't look and my husband and I quickly cleaned it up. And she says, I'm ready. I'm ready to look at myself. So I took the garbage bag off the mirror and she said, I don't look that bad. And it actually gives me chills right now, uh, remembering that moment. Because I knew from that moment on that my daughter could get through this, that my daughter could be strong to fight the battle of cancer. Because as she said, hair will not define me. So she fought this battle of cancer without wearing a wig. She didn't want to wear a wig. She didn't want to hide behind that. And she had some onlookers at times when she walked and she would look back at them. Uh, she tells a story how she had to go to PT because she had neuropathy due to the vincristrine and she just couldn't walk. Her ankles were very weak. And she walked into PT and there was an old fart there and he had a bald head and he said, ha, you look just like me. Well, that was very upsetting to her and very upsetting to me because as a mom, as a mom going through the journey with your child with cancer, you feel their pain. And at that moment, I just felt so bad. You know, I just, it was horrible. What do you do? This is human nature. But she also had some very good moments. She was dressed up one day uh, to visit a, a friend and um, she went into the elevator at Nordstrom's, all dressed up. And I wasn't with her, but when, I, when she came back, she told me, I walked into the elevator and this woman said to me, I just love your vibe. And that just made her feel so great. Well, it made me feel great too, okay? I, it gave her confidence, you know? And she walked very proudly being bald. So much so that she started a web, I'm sorry, a blog that I will share in the comments. It's called Bald, Bold, and Beautiful. And she talks all about her cancer, all about her journey. And um, it's a very inspirational blog and who, that has brought a lot of inspiration to many people, I'm hearing. People that even do not have cancer but are going through struggles. So please share her blog, read her blog, and um, get some insight and know that there is light at the end of the tunnel by reading her blog. So let's see what else I wanted to say. Um, so going through this journey of the whole year, it made me also realize something else. I am a second time caretaker. My mom, 31 years ago, had cancer and I would go down every other weekend to help my father with my mom. And during that time, every other weekend, I saw a downward spiral. Uh, it was not, it, it was just really bad. But with my daughter, I got to tell you, everything, of course, not everything was positive. I don't want to make it out that way. But when she had the chemo, the second she got that chemo, literally, the next night that she was home, the night sweats got less, you know, because she was sweating so much. I had to change not only her sheets and her mattress pad every day, but her pillow was drenched. So 
for me, this journey, every day that I saw my daughter get better, it was a celebration. Yes, at first it was a very initial shock. I still don't believe my daughter had cancer. And then, yes, she lost her hair, but she walked with her head bald proudly. She was very strong. And every step of the way, if there was progress with my daughter, it made me as the mom feel, we're gonna get through this, you know? From not being able to walk up the stairs that I had to hold her hand, and then she could go up the stairs. From walking to the stop sign, but then the next day she could walk around the block. That was progress. From being able to sit down and enjoy a hamburger, that was a celebration. Don't get me wrong, we had bad moments. But looking back on the whole this year, it was a journey. And I view my daughter now as a much stronger person, mentally and physically, than before she had cancer. So for those of you that are going through the fight with cancer right now, I want you to know that stick with that fight. You can do it. You will get through it. And at the end, you're going to come out much stronger. You, you may not feel it right now if you're going through a bad time, but please believe me, you will come out much stronger. Hair does not define you. Cancer does not define you. So until next time, this is Lympho Mama. Please check out my daughter's blog. I know you're going to love it. Take care. And remember, take one day at a time and sometimes one hour at a time.